When studying PLCs and writing test program software, simulation tools are great, but sometimes it's hard to beat real electrical signals for hands-on training. For the quick PLC logo training demonstrator, I considered building an I.O. simulator panel with switches and LEDs and a couple of pots for the analog inputs. Siemens offer an input simulator with six switches and two pots, but the price is ridiculous. I mean, it's not even in focus. It also has no output simulator. I then found a Polish company, Kamami, makes a much better unit with eight inputs, and of those, inputs seven and eight can be switched to analog with selection of onboard potentiometer, photo sensor, temperature sensor, and external input for zero to five volt sensors. The main board contains all those components and comes with a pair of plastic standoffs so the heavy handed don't snap the board off the terminal fingers, which just slip into the logo terminals. A separate board interfaces with the relay output. It uses constant current drivers for the LEDs rather than resistors, so they'll be as bright on 12 volt supply as they are on 24 volt. Note that this board only works with the relay outputs and won't work with the transistor outputs. There's the complete kit, and that's how it should look connected up to the logo. So all of that for 44 euro, good deal. Documentation is good and is available in English online and in PDF. Online version, PDF version. There isn't an electrical schematic, something I always like to see. So I created this one and will post that on the Quick PLC website linked below. One for the input module and one for the output module. The toggle switches are a little difficult to see when zoomed out, so let's put some heat shrink on those and mark up the pot. The board has four power terminals on the left. There are two M's which are connected internally and two L pluses which are connected internally. These also show up on the right hand side to power external sensors as required. We can see there's an inductor down here on the board, so that suggests that there's a regulator, probably for the 5 and 10 volt supplies for the onboard simulation. There are a couple of small chips here, so these appear to be amplifying the temperature sensor with a span of 5 to 105 degrees centigrade. The manual says it's subject to the voltage regulator tolerance of 12 to 20 millivolts, so check the Kamami manual for a better understanding of that. Then there's the light sensor that's fed through an amplifier. We'll have a look at the range of values we can get from that later on. We have a potentiometer. I've marked it up with a black line for clarity. And on these terminals here, we can connect an external five volt analog sensor. And the manual suggests a Pololu distance sensor. A pair of sliding selector switches here determine which of the analog simulations you're using. And these toggle switches d determine whether you're using analog or digital inputs. And finally, these eight switches here simulate the digital I.O. The output module has four identical circuits consisting of a constant current LED driver and LED driven by the right side terminal of each relay output. L plus is fed in on the left terminal. The logo 24 volt DC transistor outputs have all the right side terminals connected internally to M, so they won't drive the output simulator correctly. Additionally, the L plus power will be fed backwards into the Q terminals. The logo may survive this, but I won't be testing it for you. The logo has some very useful input and output diagnostic screens, but to access those we need to quit programming mode, and to quit programming mode we must have a program. So we can enter a very simple one from the front panel. Here I'm putting input 1, toggling output 1, input 2, output 2, etc.
Note that programming from the front panel always works from the output backwards. So you start with Q4, go to the input type you want. It could be a function block, but in this case, it's just an input. That's that. So escape out of there, save the program changes, escape out of there, and start the PLC. And we're out. Once the system clock is displayed, press the right arrow key to display the input status. We're only interested in inputs 1 to 8, but you can see they're all there. Touch the right arrow again and you get the outputs display. Here we'll just check output 3, very useful for testing your program function. Right again, we can test the analog inputs. So here we're selecting the potentiometer and we can say input 1 is varying from fully anti-clockwise, should give us 0 counts, and fully clockwise will give us 1000 counts for 10 volts. Switching analog input 1 from pot to light will allow us to test the light sensor on analog input 1. Here we can see a reading of about 700 when bright to less than 200 when dark. Switching on simulator analog input 2 allows us to select between the external input and the temperature sensor. The sensor is reading over 26 degrees at the moment and the room temperature is not that high so there's some calibration to be investigated later on. I hope you found that instructive. I'm very pleased with the Kamami simulator and recommend it in preference to the Siemens product. I'll be using the simulator in future training videos, so subscribe if you want a notification to pop up on YouTube. If you have any comments on this video or topics you'd like covered, then please leave a comment below. Thank you.